Hello, and so today we're going to be taking a look at, I've been telling people, that I've been looking at COVID numbers and uh, analyzing those and, and taking a look at those. And so I thought I'd share with you a little bit about what am I seeing as I look at the numbers, what does that look like and, and how does that impact my decision making and things like that. And so let me just start off by saying I am not a scientist, I'm not a medical professional, uh, but, the, but I am kind of good at math. And so just looking at what are the numbers and what do they tell us? And so as we think about COVID, I think there's two questions that really we need to, to ask. The first question uh, is, is you know, how likely is it that I am going to get or that I am going to spread COVID, right? How, how prevalent is it currently uh, in, in Illinois, in the state of Illinois, in this area? But then also how deadly is it? How bad of a disease is this? You know, uh, what am I going to be dealing with? And, and obviously the big question, right? The, the fear of COVID is, is I don't want to get something that is going to cause me to die, right? And so um, is this really a deadly disease? And, and then, okay, how do I make my decision making then as a result of that? And so uh, here's some numbers to kind of help put some of these things into perspective. Uh, now, all of the numbers I'm going to be showing you are numbers that are from the uh, Illinois Department of Health website. You can go and, and check me on them. Uh, a couple of things you'll need to know first, today is August 24th. And so if you're watching this video and it is two or three weeks in the future, uh, then forget it. None of these numbers are going to mean anything at that point. Uh, but this is just simply looking at the numbers as of today. What do they look like? Uh, the other thing that you need to recognize is where I'm located. I am in the Illinois Valley. And so if you are watching this video and you are somewhere else, uh, not in the Illinois Valley, not in Illinois, uh, then what you might want to do is take a look at how I've kind of broken these things down and maybe do some research for your area and try to determine, okay, what's actually going on here in my area and how might that impact uh, my decision making as well? And so here we go. As of today, as I, as I look at it, um, in the state of Illinois, we have had um, 7,888 people who have died from COVID. Now, that's a big number. Now, bear in mind that that isn't like 7,888 7, people that have died today. This is since March when we started counting these things. We have had 7,888 people who have died from COVID. Now, the interesting thing is when you break that down and you look at it by age group, what you find is that of those who have died from COVID, um, 6,801 of those have been people over the age of 60. And so what that tells us, 86%. And so one of the things that we can learn from that is that we have a very vulnerable population out there, that this disease is highly deadly um, for a particular age group, for a particular group of people, right? When we see numbers that say that <clears throat> 6,800 of the approximately 7,900 deaths are over the age of 60, that ought to get our attention and we ought to take a, a closer look at that. But here's something that I also found that was really interesting. And, and these numbers aren't directly given to you on the, the, uh, the Department of Health website, but all the numbers are there that you can do the math and actually arrive at this if you break it down uh, by age group and then you look at, okay, given the number of people who test positive, what percentage of those end in death, right? And so the, the question becomes not how likely are you to get it, but the question is, if you have it, um, how likely is it that this is going to be something that will lead to death? And we're going to break that down by age group because I think this is really telling. And one of the things you find is that if you are over 80 and you test positive for COVID, there is a 29% chance that that is going to end in death. So that's, that's almost one in three. And so this is something you need to take really seriously, right? If you are over 80 and you test positive, you have a one in three chance of, of that ending in death. Um, but I want you to notice what happens very quickly. As we get down in 70, it drops to 15%. 60 to 6%. If you're in your 50s, it's a 2%. If you're in your 40s like me, it's 1%. And by the time you get down 30s, we're talking about 0.3%. That's three out of 100. That's pretty small, but it gets even smaller. People in their 20s 
we're looking at a 0.07% chance. So of those who are in their 20s who get te who test positive, only 0.07%, seven out of 10,000 of those will end in death. And when you get even lower, it goes down to 0.02%. And so one of the things we see is that this is very much something that is broken down by age group, right? And, and, and so we can track that and it's very clear. Um, now, in terms of how prevalent is it and how prevalent is it specifically in our area? Well, uh, if we look at LaSalle County numbers, right, we see that in LaSalle County, there are 1,115 case, positive cases of coronavirus. Now, again, that doesn't mean that there are 1,115 current cases. There's been 1,115 cases uh, since March that have been tested positive here in LaSalle County. Um, and if you break that down by population, that's about 1% of our population that is tested positive uh, at some point uh, for coronavirus. Now, if we look at how many people of those have, how many people have died in LaSalle County from COVID, that number is 39, 39 people which is 0.04% of our population. So 0 0.04, four out of 10,000, right? So, so this is a very small number, uh, even in LaSalle County. But here's what's interesting is when you compare these numbers, the 1% and the 0.4% uh, to surrounding counties, not, not comparing us to Southern Illinois, not comparing to Chicago, but just looking at what are the counties that are surrounding our county looking like, we actually are at the high end in terms of the percentage of our population that has been affected by this. And we are the highest death rate of any of the surrounding counties around us. And I don't think there's any specific reason for that other than it's just sort of somebody's gotta be highest and right now it happens to be us. And so uh, that's where we're at in, in LaSalle County. Um, one of the interesting things about LaSalle County, though, is if you look at testing numbers, it would tell us that 20% of our population has been tested. Now, I don't know if they account for people who get tested twice, so that number might be a little bit less than that. But here's the thing. That is one of the highest as you look at surrounding counties, which is a really good thing because testing allows us to identify who has it. It allows us to quarantine people, allows us to slow and, and get rid of this thing so that it's not continuing to be transmitted. And so the fact that we have one of the highest testing rates of surrounding counties is actually really good news to me. If we look at testing um, in Illinois, what we're finding right now is that we are testing about 50,000 new tests are being done in the state of Illinois on a daily basis. 50,000 tests. That's a huge number, and that number is continually increasing. If you go to, to, the, to the Illinois Department of Health website, you'll see the chart, and it's just, it's going up. It's continually increasing. Um, about 2,000 of those right now, uh, in, in looking at it sort of this past week, around 2,000 a day of those uh, test positive. And that is actually a number that's also increasing. Now, it's increasing more slowly than it was a couple of weeks ago, but it is still increasing. And so we're seeing 2,000 new cases per day. Uh, and so that's, that's a little bit of an alarming number. But again, that's a slow, it's increasing, but it's a slower increase than what we've seen. Uh, and so that's something that we need to, to kind of keep an eye on, especially in, in the coming weeks, that if this number starts growing and getting way out of control, um, th then there's some, some things going on there. But this is a really significant number to me here. And that is this, is that right now in Illinois, only 15 people per day are dying from COVID-related illness. And so as you look at that, you say, well, 15, you know, that's not zero. I, I wish that were zero, but it's not. It's 15. But think about that number, 15 out of a state with a population of 12.7 million, 15 people out of a population of 12.7 million. That gives us like a 0.00001%. Like literally it, it's almost a one in a million chance that you will die from COVID today. And so it's a very minuscule number. Uh, and that number is continually decreasing. The, the number of people who are dying per day in Illinois from COVID 
has been decreasing uh, really over the past two months, and it continues to just continue to, to, to move down from there. And so that's been really encouraging. Now, one of the things, though, we have to take into account is, is thinking about this area. You know, the LaSalle County numbers are helpful, but the reality is what are the numbers right here? What are the numbers right here in Oglesby, LaSalle, Peru? Um, and so I, I looked, and you can go by zip code and check out, you know, this, this area and say, okay, what, what are the number of cases uh, in this area? But the reality is we come in contact with people that aren't just from Oglesby, LaSalle, Peru, right? We have people from Utica, Mendota, Ottawa, uh, Putnam County, Spring Valley. So, so what I did is I looked and I said, okay, you can actually go. They have a map and you can actually hover over the different areas. And so I said, okay, in the Illinois Valley and in the sort of surrounding communities that we're most likely to have most of our contact with, how many cases are there? And the number I came up with when I added them all together was 766 cases in the Illinois Valley. Well, then I went and did some research and I added up the population of all the communities that I had in my, my tally there. And I came up with a total population of 71,538 people, which is about 1%, which puts us right in line with where LaSalle County's numbers are as well. And so what, what does all this mean? As, as I look at it, because I'm really looking at saying, okay, hey, uh, it's fall, it's youth ministry season, we're looking at starting things up, and uh, how safe is that, and how should we go about doing it? And quite honestly, when I look at these numbers, what I'm seeing is that we have a, a disease that is highly uh, problematic for people at the older end of the spectrum, but that is much less significant as you get down into to the younger younger age groups. And that the actual numbers, even though we talk about numbers going up, numbers going down, the actual numbers are actually pretty small when you look at them. When we think of this in terms of actual numbers, and when we think of this in terms of, of just sort of percentages, these numbers are really low. And so to me, I look at this and I say, you know, I don't think that this should necessarily prevent us from being able to begin to gather people together. I think there is some common sense things we can do in terms of, of distancing and masks to, to sort of, you know, and obviously if someone is sick or, or has tested positive to say, you know, um, don't come. Uh, but for those that are healthy, for, you know, if we do some common sense things to try to limit the spread of this, uh, I think we can do that and, and do it well and, and not have to be afraid of how quickly this can spread or, or of, of anything of that nature, right? And so these are the numbers that I've been looking at and continuing to monitor. Now, obviously, you know, there, there is sort of this uh, fear that, you know, these numbers can change very quickly and they can move exponentially. And so this numbers could change and they could look radically different uh, three weeks from now. But as of right now, as of today, as I look at the numbers, this is what I'm seeing. And quite honestly, I think, you know, we don't need to really be in fear when we look at these numbers. We need to use some common sense. We need to do what we can to limit the spread. But at the same time, we don't need to live in fear uh, of the coronavirus. And so that's, that's Andy's analysis of coronavirus as of today.